Hey, how you doing? Dennis here, and today we're going to be making an audio player with working controls, an animated audio icon, a playback status bar, and a working elapsed time counter. Let's get started. Let's start with the polygon tool. Draw a triangle, 52 by 52. Let's rotate it minus 90 degrees, and let's round those corners to two. Now let's wrap that triangle in a frame, give it a white fill, and let's color the triangle with twos. And this is our play button. Now draw a rectangle. Let's make it 12 by 40. Let's round those corners to two. Duplicate. Select them both, wrap them in an auto layout, put six between, center it, make it 52 by 52. Let's give it a white fill and fill the rectangles with twos. This is our pause button. Go back to the polygon tool, draw another triangle. Let's do this one 30 by 30. Rotate minus 90 degrees and round the corners. Duplicate it. Wrap those in an auto layout. Put the space between at minus 10 and align those in the center. Now let's make that 52 by 52. Give it a white fill. Fill our triangles with twos. This is our fast forward button. Duplicate it. Select the triangles. Rotate it 90 degrees. And this is our rewind button. Select them all. Create a component set. Call it controls. I usually wrap component sets in an auto layout to keep them neat and tidy. Change property one to button. Starting with volume icons here, I'm going to name this one up and this one down. Draw a frame. I'm going to make that frame 256 by eight. I'm going to round the corners to eight. I'm going to call this frame volume bar. Now draw another frame. I'm going to call this one volume level. I'm going to fill this frame with nines. I'm going to make it eight tall and I'm going to place this frame inside the volume bar frame. And I'm going to position it at minus 16. Let's create a number variable. Let's call it volume. Give it a value of 176. Select the volume level layer and apply that variable to the width of that layer. Select all, apply an auto layout, space between the zero, left center, make that a component and call it volume. Now let's select the up icon, switch to prototype, Create an on-click interaction to set the variable volume to the volume plus 16. Let's set a conditional. If the volume is greater than or equal to 272, we set that variable to remain at 272. So it doesn't get any longer than the bar being full. Let's select the down icon, create an on-click interaction, set variable to the volume, minus 16. Now let's set this conditional to say if the volume value is less than or equal to 16, that volume variable remains 16.
draw a frame, drag out an instance to test it, and let's try it out. Nice. Now let's select the volume level layer and match the color of our icons. Select the frame tool, draw frame. Let's make it 326 by 8, round the corners. Let's fill it with gray. And let's call this start. Draw another frame. Let's call it playback. Let's make it eight tall and let's fill it with green. Place that inside the start frame. Position it at minus one. Now let's create another variable. Let's call it playback and leave it at zero. Apply that variable to the width of the playback frame. Duplicate. Let's call this one after delay. Select all. Create a component set. Let's call it playback. Switch to prototype. Connect the first one to the second. Let's set it to after delay. Let's set it to one millisecond and set the variable to playback, playback plus one. Now take the second one and connect it to the first. Let's set that to after delay of one millisecond. Now let's draw a frame to test it. Drag out an instance. Let's try it out. Start with a square frame. Let's make it 42 by 42. And let's call it icon one. Let's draw a rectangle inside the frame. Let's make it two by two. Unlock it. And let's fill it with green. Let's name that rectangle bar one and duplicate it four times. Select them, auto layout, put three between and align them centered. And let's call that bars. Center that in your frame, constrain it to the centers and duplicate it. Now select each rectangle and change its height. Duplicate it again, and let's repeat that process changing the heights again. Let's do that a bunch. Select all, create a component set, let's call it sound icon. Switch to prototype, connect your first frame to your second, switch to after delay, one millisecond, switch to smart animate, let's do a linear at 200 milliseconds. And connect all the other ones the same way. Now on your last icon, Connect it to your second one after delay one millisecond to create a loop. Draw a frame, let's test it out. Nice.
Select the text tool and type a zero. Duplicate it, change it to a colon. Now duplicate the zero two more times. Select all, auto layout, space between at zero, and call this start. Let's give it a white fill and fill our numbers with black. Now let's create some variables. Our first one, clock one. A second one called clock 10. And a third called clock 100. Now we will apply these variables to each position on our clock timer. Duplicate, call this one after delay, create a component set, and let's call it clock. Switch to prototype, connect your first to your second, let's do after delay of 1000 milliseconds, which equals one second. Now we're going to set some variables. We'll set clock 1 to clock 1 plus 1. We're going to set a conditional that clock 1, when it equals 10, clock 1 will reset to 0. and clock 10 will be clock 10 plus 1. We'll set another conditional that says when clock 10 equals 6, set clock 10 back to 0. And set clock 100 to clock 100 plus 1. Now take our second frame, connect it back to our first, and set it to after delay of 1 millisecond. Select our frame tool, and let's test it out. As we approach 9, it should roll up to 10. And since watching a timer is about as exciting as watching paint dry, let's jump ahead 59 to 1 minute. Select the asset panel, drag out a play button, duplicate it twice, select your buttons, Apply an auto layout, let's put 56 between, select the first one, change it to rewind, select the third, change it to fast forward, and let's call it buttons. And let's place that in our layout. Drag out an instance of our volume, and let's place that in our layout. Let's go to the component and make a small edit. Let's put a gray tint behind the volume bar. Drag out a sound icon, cut it, paste to replace this rectangle. Let's place a playback bar. And let's place the clock. Duplicate the entire frame. Let's call it play. Now on the pause screen, let's remove the interactions of the sound icon, the playback bar, and the clock so they don't start automatically on the pause screen. Duplicate that again, and let's call this one finished. Now select the play button. 
Let's change it to paused on the play screen. Let's scale up our artwork to 330 and put a drop shadow on it. Select the play button, switch to prototype, connect it to the play screen, switch to smart animate. Select the pause button on the play screen, connect it to the pause screen with the same settings. Now select our playback bar and let's add a conditional that says when the playback equals or is greater than 330, we're going to navigate to the finish screen with a smart animate. Select our play button on the finish screen. Let's connect it back to the play screen. Let's set the variables playback back to zero and all of the clock variables back to zero. So when we hit the play button again, everything resets and starts over. And there you have it, an advanced Figma prototype that mimics an audio player with pause and play features, a status bar, sound icon, and timer. Well, that wraps it up. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this and came away with something new. Please like and subscribe to see more content like this. I really appreciate it. I'll see you for more lessons real soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.